please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video the, the markets are now at the, nearly the low point of the day not saying much because you know just just hit that so uh, a lot of stocks are under pressure mid caps in particular uh, uh, the the index itself is down 2 thirds of 1% now and of course uh, the usual suspects the psu banks the adanis of the world bml bilram puchini all these stocks down quite a bit just dial as well uh, just pull out the intraday chart of just dial actually and uh, see the the way that that stock has moved uh, uh, and couple of others like suzlon as well uh, that's just dial for you at the low point suzlon as well intraday chart uh, i have no I, i don't know why this stock is still in fndo it's a mystery to me but uh, that stock right now down about close to 3.5% uh, ashwin and mitesh back with us for btst calls uh, Ashwini, you go first. So the market is ending at the low point. Uh, uh, do you want to carry forward the positions, or do you think uh, enough for the week? And what about uh, stock calls? I think there's no harm in even carrying, because uh, you know pullback has to be flattish. Right now, I think four sectors are higher, so there's no question there is intense selling, and it's not only in banks. Even Maruti Suzuki is coming down now. Metals are joining in. uh techs are participating so now what's left i mean not dabar etc they can't take the market higher so the, this next leg could probably have all sectors uh, going down now we may again try a 20 point pull back tomorrow just to you know because the time hasn't elapsed enough but i don't think this pull back in terms of price levels is likely to uh, get past 10290 and you will still have half an hour lots can happen in half an hour i would still go short because i don't think uh, anybody is going to buy for monday having said that uh, i think individual stocks uh, gspl is a sell with a stop of 230 target of 215 adani port is a sell with a stop of 383 target of 365 and uh, you know all weather favorite ashok leland that's a buy with a stop of 143 target of 156 thank heavens for some of those all weather friends right all this i'm speaking only from the bulls point of view of course the bears are having a field day today mitesh uh, let's get your ideas as well yeah so i have a sell on ultratech cement i think they've slightly come off uh, but uh, stvt uh, around 4095 with the stop at 4130 for targets of 4050 and kajaria ceramics after uh, showing a lot of oversold readings on the charts is trying to reverse on the hourly chart so buy with the stop or btst with the stop at 561 look for a bounce to 580 kind of thing fair enough uh, Deepan, uh, what's what's your basic uh, sense? Do you think this is uh, a decent, healthy bull market correction, which is giving a buying opportunity, or are you sensing that uh, something is changing? And for now, uh, you will get better levels. No, I think I'll go with the former, and it's a very interesting question. Uh, requires some thought process over there, uh, because whenever correction takes place, you know, it could always be the turning point for a bull market. but i think i rest my confidence on the fact that the earnings season which went by was pretty decent and even whatever monthly numbers are visible whether it's tax collection whether it's automobile sales you know all the other parameters of the underlying economy this they seem to be doing pretty much okay and uh, you know whatever problems are we are facing right now be it because of uh, long term capital gains mutual fund selling to pay dividend or interest rates moving up or whatever happened with pnb bank I think that has broadly got discounted, or maybe if the market falls by a couple of percentage points from here, that would have got discounted. And some amount of semblance and stability has come in the global market. So I think these are fair levels. Uh, you know, further correction from here sure could come, maybe two, three percent or so. Unless there is more bad news, I don't think that you know the market could correct much more than that. And opportunities like these are great for investors. You know, long-term investors who have a three to five-year type of a view. to get into good solid blue chip stocks because when the markets are rallying uh, you know these stocks uh, the blue 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 stock blue chip stocks don't give an opportunity and there's a mind block because of the share price because of the valuation and many other concerns so i don't think that if you're a long term investor you should miss this opportunity to increase your exposure to stocks so deepan before we let you go do give us some of uh, those names the blue chips or even beyond blue chips if there are any interesting mid caps that uh, you are looking to load up on in this correction See, I think mid-caps may still have a few more um, tough months or so. But amongst the Sensex, Nifty companies, I think you know, go for HDFC Bank, HDFC the the big one, or even an Indusind Bank, Maruti, Aisha Motors. 
these are the kind of stocks we're looking at acquiring at this point of time. They've seen a correction of anywhere from 10 to 20 percent or thereabout. And uh, you know, these stocks, you know, when they start rallying, they quickly move up pretty fast. They're institutional favorites as well. And there's a comfort uh, that you know, even if the banking crisis were to deepen, one wouldn't expect these companies uh, or at least the banking companies I name to get embroiled in them. So I would say go with safe stocks. Go mm. with stocks which have had a good track record which are, have been the favorites of the bull market so far. This is the time to buy those stocks. I think mid caps will always give an opportunity from time to time to get into these stocks. But uh, you know, the, the, the solid portfolio, the core holdings is what needs to be built uh, at moments like this. Fair point. Deepan, thanks a lot for your time today. Have a good weekend. Well, let's get an insight into dealing room chatter. Then Nimesh is here with Trader Talk. Uh, Nimesh, uh, the pullback from 200 DMA, but that's not lasting. What are the what are dealers saying? Hi, and so now uh, the sense I'm getting is uh, this 200 DMA will be respected at least in the near term, and there is a possibility of a pullback to say 10,400 or 10,500 levels. But again, you know the sentiment is clearly on the negative side. So most of the dealers do believe that this rally will be used as a selling opportunity, and one should exit some of the you know weak stocks in their portfolio. So that's a clear message coming in. In terms of flows, uh, slightly positive from the DIS. So there is some bit of buying coming in in the large cap names from the from the larger DIS. But still, uh, you know, the sentiment is on the negative side. Uh, we are seeing bank stocks under pressure today. Metal stocks are, uh, are under pressure on the back of global weakness. So there is no clear leadership coming in, whether in the large caps or in the small cap. Yes, some some bit of uh, you know mid caps have outperformed today because of the sheer underperformance in the last few days. But the orientation is clearly on the negative side. Uh, if once 200 TM is taken out, then probably you'll see a sharp sell off on the on the downside. So that is something which a lot of dealers are cognizant about. But in the near term. Given that there is so much of negative, uh, you know, uh, sentiment being talked about, the sense I'm getting is maybe this 200 DMA will be will be respected in the near term, and maybe a pullback is expected. But from a flow point of view, or from a sentiment point of view, it clearly is on the downside, and it looks like there is more pain in the mid cap and small cap. Okay, Nimesh, thanks very much for getting us that roundup of uh, the mood check out there. On that note, let's uh, get you some market opinion. Earlier, we caught up with Vikas Gatani, founder and CEO of Progress India Opportunities Fund. We got his sense on uh, the market and the volatility that we're seeing here in India right now. There's been a number of factors which has uh, caused this shift in sentiment. Uh, it's not only one factor. Of course, gro global markets have sold off with the rise in U.S. Treasury yields, asset, con uh, asset valuation concerns and also the liquidity contraction which is happening because of the unwinding of QE. But domestically, let's look at a number of factors which has caused this shift in sentiment. Of course, long-term capital gains was a definite negative, both from a foreign and a domestic investor's point of view. We expect further selling pressure uh, till the end of month of March because uh, you can still uh, sell stocks without attracting uh, long-term capital gains uh, tax uh, till end of March. So that has been one negative. Um, then India, Anuj has, you know, um, the interest rates in India, the cycle was, uh, uh, was while the global interest rates were rising over the last one and a half years led by the U.S., Indian interest rates were on their way down. Now, uh, in, interest rates in India have definitely bottomed out and with the rise in inflation and inflation expectations, we see that rates in India are also likely to rise and uh, that is not helping the markets as well. Um, the third thing is, um, of course, uh, 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 resolution of uh, stressed assets in the banking system. And while st uh, steps are being taken and issues are being addressed, but there's always a fear that more skeletons may come out of the closet. And uh, that's also not helping the sentiment. Um, also, the fact that you know uh, you have had some recent scams, fraudulent trading practice, uh, fraudulent, fraudulent practices in the banking system. There is, there is definitely a possibility of tightening of trade finance um, and related lending uh, from the banking system, and that could uh, also put a dent in the, in the economic functioning. Just to continue that point, do you think the LTCG and more importantly this credit tightening because of bank fraud can lead to more pain? Uh, if yes, how much more? Well, there can always be possibilities of variety of factors playing out which can affect Indian markets, but uh, more immediate ca causes for concern. One would be um, the re recapitalization process of the banking system, whether the government will be able to go ahead and implement the recapitalization program, given the kind of uh, you know, uh, scams which have come out in the banking system. 
and that if the if the recapitalization does not happen then that could be quite stressful um, for the markets um, second and uh, more importantly is that while in the last two years you have seen the, the, the domestic institutional and retail investor moving into the equity markets, uh, we, we do think that uh, this, this investment has, uh, averaged, uh, has come, uh, come into, the uh, into the markets and at an average index level of about 9,500 or so. So if that all market goes around there, we want to see whether the, uh, the, the domestic retail investors inflows are longer term in nature and they stand by their investments or there is a, there is a fear of redemption which happens uh, which could then exacerbate the selling pressure in the markets. Let's talk about your fund. Now you have overweight on financials and discretionary. They did well in the bull market of course but they have been reserved for some punishment. Uh, uh, what's your strategy now? Are you topping up here? Uh, are you avoiding them for now? How would you approach these stocks? As a fund, Progress India Opportunities Fund, uh, you know, uh, focuses on the rising aspiration levels of the young Indian consumer. We totally believe in the uh, demographics, in the in the energies of the young consumer, in the uh, in the rising aspiration levels, and the consequent discretionary spending which the uh, consumer is doing and bound to do over the next uh, ten years or so. Um, and that's where we focus on and we do not see any uh, slowdown in that discretionary spending. You can talk of look at vehicle sales numbers, you can look at um, you know, general um, consumerism trends. Uh, that story continues to remain quite strong. We also continue to like the non-banking financial services segment, partly because uh, with problems in the banking segment both at the PSU banks and some of the private sector banks level um, which constitutes more than 95 percent of the total uh, rate of take in the economy we see a lot of potential for the NBFCs to to offset that and keep growing at a rapid pace going forward it looks like this Friday is going to go down in uh, negative territory. The color is red across the Nifty, the Sensex, and of course the Nifty Bank as well as the mid-cap indices. Sanjeev Bhaseen of IFL with us on the show now. Sanjeev, what's your reading? The markets lost another 2-2.5% two, two in this week. If you're looking at individual sectors or individual stocks, the fall is a lot more. Do you get the sense that we're anywhere close to the bottom of this correction? Yeah, hi. So, you know, you, you can recall about a couple of weeks back, I had given you this warning that beware the Ides of March. I thought all this will hunker down to NPA provisioning, hike in bond yields, negative sentiment from the FIs because of the PNB fiasco, and you have the Trump trade war. So, I think uh, 97 to 9900 would be where we will bottom out, which could be, you know, just a technical uh, barrier which you hit. But uh, like I said, you know, now you've come a far cry with uh, mid caps correcting anywhere from 15 to 40 percent. And uh, that is where uh, the real, uh, uh, you know, value lies. So we are saying this fear, fear is a good time to buy. If you have your portfolio and you're sitting on cash, then start deploying. There are a lot of value which we see in a lot of mid caps and in some of the large caps. On the fear factor, we think 10,000 definitely could be breached, but uh, you know, it may not last. So the month of March will, is giving you volatility. And if you want volatility to be your friend, so keep your buying list ready. Okay. Well, there's, there's a lot of stocks ending at the low point. This has been a theme which has played out today. Metals, uh, except for, say, GSW Steel, uh, are ending at the low point. So stocks like Tata Steel, Jindal Steel and Power, Sale, uh, and the non-ferrous ones as well, Hindalco Sale, are ending at the low point. And PSU banks are again ending at the low point of the day. Add, uh, you know, apart from Canada Bank, Oriental Bank of Commerce, that stock also is ending at the low point that's pnb for you that's also ending at the low point of the day so obviously there's been a bit of a problem for this market and uh, sanjeev hi good afternoon so thoughts on how to approach psu bank from here because you know i i i ask this because a lot of people ask us this uh, every day on facebook live uh, there are at least 10 questions on P psu banks uh, uh, every day on twitter you know so many people ask me on uh, psu bank so your thoughts on uh, you know how to approach this space from here Yeah, so Anuj, it's not difficult, it's not easy because you'll get negative rhetoric every day and every day people will feel 
that a can of worms is going to open out. On top of that, you have NPA provisioning, mark-to-market losses, which have to be, uh, you know, with, um, uh, which will again affect the balance sheet. If there are two stocks which I can actually stick my neck out, it would be Bank of Baroda and SBI. Uh, PNB, if definitely it gets this uh, approval for staggering the losses over a one-year period, there will be a lot of value on that around that 95 level. So, like I said, you will have to ignore a lot of rhetoric, and you could, uh, you know, start to invest. Uh, overall, we think that this fiasco may have played out on the bottom line, but we think going ahead, uh, over a period of time, credit will definitely expand. Government is looking to, you know, increase the vulnerability uh, in, in a big way. They are going to, you know, reduce that. And I think they will come out with a lot of firefighting, uh, firefighting measures. So, so like you said, like I said, uh, Anuj, the prices are in your favor. Only to ignore the rhetoric is not going to be easy. By the way, yes, uh, the market is down and out, but you are getting some very interesting stock action on a couple of individual names. Let's pull up the intraday of Page Industries. That one's at the day's high, 4% up. Uh, Oberoi Realty has made a strong move in such a weak market, 6%. Someone's obviously buying up uh, Oberoi. There's some of the names that are still bouncing around. InfoEdge is another one which is suddenly seeing some semblance of buying. But I know, I don't know. I mean, these are just a flash in the pan kind of stocks here and there. Otherwise, you know, I, I, was, I was about to say that. Uh, <laughs> and Page Industries normally does well in this market, so, you know, so that always has been the case. You know, whenever you have markets going down uh, and on Friday, this one does well. Four percent higher right now on Page Industries, but. Uh, uh, of course, this Ashok Leyland as well, that's also done well. So there are a couple of stocks. And Central Bank of India, there's been some block deals on Central Bank. So that one as well is, uh, of course, uh, doing well. Uh, but uh, really, I mean, uh, just few stocks. Uh, uh, I've not understood what's happened to CBOI. I mean, 18% up in a week like this when the PSU bank index is down 5-6%. Yeah. I don't know, there's some, some thought about some stake sale or something. I don't know what people are punting on after IDVI bank. Exactly. This is the next one that I don't exactly. understand. So, you know, <laughs> you don't try to understand, you know, some, some of these moves. Up. And Central Bank of India in the best of the times of PSU banks did not mm -hmm. rally. And now in the worst <laughs> times, this is the one which is rallying. That, that's, of course, market for you. But Sanjeev, uh, among the stocks that we just, just discussed, Central Bank, Ashok Leyland, Page Industries, anything that you would want to buy? Yeah, so as a disclosure, I own Page Industry and uh, Ashok Leland, but that is over 18, uh, 15, 10 years back. Uh, I still think that these are pedigree businesses. You, you know, inner comfort is something which you, <laughs> you're, paying, uh, you're, you're paying top dollar. The new generation is really, very, very fastidious about how they wear, what they do, and I think that can only gather stream. Ashok Leland is telling you that the CV cycle on the local side is showing a lot of traction. So like I said, you know, the, Anuj, the underpinnings of an economy turning is cement and uh, commercial vehicles. And uh, the, type, the type of run-up I've seen in Ashok Leland is telling me that earnings uh, now are very, very close to starting to pick up and the economy will do well. So like I said, you know, this fear is now given you a brilliant opportunity right from here till 9800, where you should be ready to put your money where your mouth is. Because I think, uh, you know, after the month of uh, March, April, May onwards, we should see very, very good, uh, you know, traction on the stock market. And this, uh, this, you know, this blip will be an event which would be an opportunity to buy. Okay, that's Dr. Reddy's, by the way. There are five observations. Uh, we'll try to find out how big the plant is right now. You know, we are in a frame of uh, markets in a frame of mind where it wants to read everything negative. There was a time when EIRs used to be positive, but... Uh, now what's happening is that you don't know, you know, how you know serious these observations are. This, this is, a, of course, this is a case of form 483 with five observations. So we'll find out. First of all, we'll need to see how big this plant is uh, for Dr. Reddy's. But for whatever it's worth, uh, that one is down about uh, uh, almost one percent. Uh, Ashwini, I wanted your thoughts on a couple of these outliers in in market today, which are going home at the high point. Uh, uh, you know, Kajaria Ceramics, uh, a Jubilant Food, a Page Industries. See, these are things which are not impacted by, uh, you know, rate hikes or global issues. These are not defensive type things. And that's what you will see this year, that the FMCG and where the demand is inelastic, etc. Uh, you know, those stocks will do much better than your, you know, cyclicals, etc. At least till this correction goes on. So uh, those are stocks you should get into because they could outperform this year. Sanjeev, what are your thoughts on some of these key pharma names? Incidentally, uh, just today uh, on Dr. Reddy's, there was a big report. I mean, Nomura came out with a very big target with a 50% upside. They think that 
maybe the worst is over and then we get this news but anyhow sun pharma for you know in specific it's lost 5 6% in a week when those three observations came out they didn't seem like they were end of the world sort of observations but again the market's just not interested right now correct so the frame of mind is to sell anything which is weak and uh, you know you are uh, now at a plethora where uh, you have seen the broader market underperform and correct so uh, why should pharma be st the last man standing but like i said i think a large part of the negatives have already been played out in fact if anything these eir should be a positive going forward given that uh, generic pricing and uh, and uh, you know the fd approvals in the last 3 months have been the strongest since the last 2 years so yes sun aurobindo dr reddy are all accumulates i think they can uh, the pharma index itself should show you a 15 sure. to 20% upside in this year now you are getting blue chips for a song when most of the negatives have already played out and if anything positive in the next uh, you know week 10 days or maybe a month comes on i think these stocks can give you a lot of value picks uh, okay. going for a 20% upside Okay, let's address this Dr. Reddy's news then. Uh, you know, of course, we only had basic information. Ekta now joins us. Uh, Ekta, you have just 45 seconds, so explain this to us. Well, uh, I don't have that much information with me. I just know that the Medak unit is basically an API unit of Dr. Reddy's, uh, which has received five observations in this particular inspection. Now, we don't know whether it is actually a captive API plant or whether this was supplying abroad uh, or to other facilities. But what we do understand is that, uh, and the management has said that this is proceeding. Procedural in nature, so maybe these five observations could then probably be resolved. But if in case there is any sort of escalation of this, then it would probably not work too well for Dr. Reddy simply because of the Shrika Kulam API facility, which is also under the scanner by the US FDA. Okay, all right, Ekta. Thanks very much for uh, getting us the quick snippet on Dr. Reddy's and uh, that particular uh, inspection. So Anuj, I think getting ready for the weekend with an absolute flat close in the Nifty and the Sensex. But if you look at the week again, we're down to two and a half percent, and that you know that classic underperformance that just seems to be continuing for us. Oh yes, and by the way, just see the chart of currencies, rupee as well. Uh, that I think is trading at the low point. So uh, uh, again, you know, uh, Surabhi, this uh, there was just one day of that FI buying. I think that also was because of that HDFC QIP money yeah. getting reflected. I think that's the sense you get. Uh, so. Uh, looks like from from the looks of it that there would have been selling. The problem for this market is this 2:30 to 3:30 period. Yeah. Almost on a, on every day. Yesterday was the Bank Nifty weekly options mm -hmm. expiry, so perhaps uh, uh, it didn't play out like that. And yesterday it was on the other way side, uh, other uh, other way. But this last one hour, cash market volumes are increasing, and a lot of heavyweights. You pointed out Reliance, for example, yeah. intraday. You know, you take a look at intraday charts of stocks like you know even HDFC Twins, Reliance, ITC, Larsen. Practically every day at 3 p.m. Uh, there, there's large selling. Tata mm. Motors. There's mm. large selling. Uh, at you know, look at that move. HDFC Bank. Uh, so what has happened here is that uh, HDFC, of course, is slightly different today because NBFC did well today. Mm. So the, the issue here is that there's a large seller who's which is the, the FII part uh, who's been selling and mm. they're selling indiscriminately and relentlessly. So if you're selling at 1800. You would sell at 1850 if the stock gives you recovery, and that's what's happening. At some point, this selling would be over. This this is a case of well, perhaps some FIs just bailing out. That of course is a process which is on right now. But right now, you don't know when this process will end. Whenever it ends, of course, you'll have a big bounce. But uh, that's not helping too much, right? I and mean, we don't know where that will end. For now, let's uh, recap the day. Then uh, another day of downtick. 180 points gone on the Bank Nifty and 100 points gone. on the on the mid cap index those were the two indices which were under pressure sensex and nifty ended flat with ne slightly negative bias because a financials did well, nbfc did well non banking financials and b it did well so they sort of prevented the sensex and nifty from having a bigger fall in terms of uh, individual stocks uh, metals don't count for much in the index but they were the biggest losers tata steel was down about 3.5% vedanta hindalco were down and of course the stocks that count for much in index axis ICICI, State Bank, Yes Bank were all down. Tata Motors as well was down about a percent. Ultra Tech Cement was down about one percent. Sun Pharma was down about one point six percent. It's been a brutal uh, month for Sun Pharma. I mean, from the highs, uh, there's been quite a bit of selling that you've seen on that stock. On the way up, Tech Mahindra, TCS, uh, Infosys. So obviously, the the IT sort of move is still intact in this market. Uh, Bajaj Finance, HDFC. Uh, large nbfcs did well in trade today that was the other talking point and we discussed mm. this in the morning as well so some of these stocks did well actually i was looking at some of the final rates on those nbfcs so i'll start with li uh, lnt uh, finance because that's 
one of the stocks that's managed a green close for itself. Uh, let's pull up M&M Financial and uh, some of the other names like a DHFL. They were on the borderline throughout the day with gains of about 1-1.5% one, one thereabouts. So you're seeing minor green DHFL couldn't quite hold on in the last uh, 20 odd minutes and it has slipped. A uh, couple of other up stocks before we start talking about the decliners. Very interesting move for instance in Kajaria. There's about a 2-2.5% two, two uh, sort of an up move that uh, was intact. Uh, if uh, there are some other stocks to look out for, then uh, perhaps a PFC, REC undoing some of yesterday's fall. That was a trend that uh, kind of stood out. Some buying on Delta Corp was clear. Ashok Leyland had a strong day today, so there's no denying that. It's been a good week for Leyland actually. And then some outliers like an Obroy Realty, which managed to uh, find buyers. By the way, NCL Industries, the stock that you heard Pankaj describe, I say I say a direct pick for the medium to long term. That stock's done 7% towards the time the market closed out. So interesting, not all loss, but having said that, we can't uh, get away from the fact that there's been a negative close for the index. Index down about 114 points, that's the mid-cap index for you. So now coming to the losers list. Of course, the indebted plays or uh, you know any of the, the those kind of conglomerates where there are concerns, so Reliance Communication down 10%, Adani group of stocks continue to sulk and suffer, so Adani Enterprises down 7.5%. Adani Power was down, but transmission the last time I saw was actually up 2.5%. We'll just get the final rates on Adani transmission there. Yeah, still about 3% higher, so a little different. PSU Bank's obviously not too great. Canada Bank down 6, 6.5%. IDBI lost 5, 5.5%. Uh, of course, the Central Bank of India was a different story in itself today. Continued to hold on to double-digit gains uh, towards the end of trade as well. Look at that, 11% move on that one stock. Uh, beyond that, if I talk about some of the other noticeable losers, so metals obviously beyond the index, sale down 6, 7%. Uh, we're looking at uh, losses, by the way, on uh, VIP, 5% lower on uh, VIP. While Page was doing well, we're talking about uh, Page Industries. This is VIP Industries, not VIP Clothing, should uh, caveat that. So these are some of the moves that we've seen pretty much all over the place. Let's pull up uh, JSW Steel as we are ending out, because otherwise it's been a very rough week for the Metals Index. Very uh, bad day as well, barring this one. 1% up and uh, clearly perhaps Anuj, I don't know, maybe Tata Steel's loss is JSW Steel's gain or at least that's that's the trade that the market seems to be playing. Oh, yes, uh, you know, obviously the, the domestic play is mm -hmm. clearly intact and the export play or the global mm -hmm. play, I mean look at the Tata Motors, that I think it has been the biggest uh, uh, sort of uh, negative mover over the mm -hmm. last few days ever since those trade war fears started to emanate. Uh, that stock has made a fresh 52-week low in today's trade. So there is mm -hmm. this, this this dichotomy. But uh, let's take some final thoughts then. Uh, Ashwani, as they say, the amateurs open the market and professionals close it. For the last few days, the closing has been quite bad for the market. Uh, thoughts for next week? Well, since you have announced on national television that last hour, you know, markets will come down. It's very simple. Last hour, sell and see what happens. Why do you have to keep losing money and... Uh, you know, keep lamenting that I'm waiting for 31st of March. Short point, you know, new investors, I hope they are watching, that if you do can't deal with markets going down, you are going to have misery in your life because markets often go down. So at least hedge your positions, buy some puts, so that till the market keeps going down, your portfolio does not get hit. There are still 21 days in March. Possibly this... Uh, uh, selling could accentuate as we go into the close and that's how markets behave so um, there should be more selling now tomorrow I'm not sure whether the low will get taken out etc because my sense is that the time needed uh, in this pullback has not been completed so maybe you'll have another sort of choppy day which goes nowhere finally and finally again comes off but uh, I don't think you may get immediate follow-through I could be wrong, but uh, today's message is clear that uh, no amount of uh, pullback is going to be sustainable in the face of uh, this sort of selling. And uh, if you have to buy, I think buying slowly uh, still makes sense and buying on an ETF basis makes sense. Try to buy stocks only when they go up because in, you know, in this buying of being a value investor, etc., you can get trapped because the stock that you decide to buy may not go up when the rally starts. Okay, uh, Mitesh, let's get your thoughts as well on the way this week has closed out and how would you look at things on Monday? Yeah, so I think, you know, what is happening is that uh, it's respecting both the important technical levels, at least for the last few days. You got the 200-day average on the downside, which was respected, and uh, 
we got the 10,300 level which uh, the Nifty is clearly showing weakness around. So maybe next few days I believe that it could be a choppy consolidation between this range. But I think eventually, you know, there's a greater chance of breaking down. So uh, once the 200 average is taken out, then I think we can play out the next leg of the correction and then, you know, possibly look at some kind of a reversal and a bottom formation. But for the timing, it looks like trade this 170 point range, try to be more short near close to about 10,300. Your stop loss is only 40 points and if it breaks, the 200 average on the downside, then I think we are looking at 10,030, 10,000 levels being tested. Yes, and Sanjeev, final word to you. As you said, 9,700 to 9,900, uh, what would be the safe stocks till then? Yeah, so I'll give you two large caps. So LNT and ITC. ITC would be my star of uh, 2018. I think uh, there is uh, enough valuation, comfort, and all the businesses are doing extremely well. LNT Finance and ICICI Pro. These would be two mid caps where we've started to buy, and we think that any decline would be another opportunity. Uh, like I said, keep your buying list ready on certain other stocks where again there is a lot of value proposition. But uh, you know the idea is that when you buy fear, the prices are in your favor. Uh, everyone was gung ho on metals when I was very very pessimistic about the weakness in the dollar. I think sale and JSW at these prices and in Dalco closer to 210 would be golden opportunities uh, to buy this, uh, you know, uncertainty because of the Trump war. So, so sale, JSW, steel and in Dalco would be three metal counters we would be accumulating on any decline. Welcome back and let's talk commodities now where the first meeting of the Niti Aayog with the state governments has happened and we have seen those initial comments as well come in from the state governments and Niti Aayog as well. And what we understand is that of course the purpose of the meeting was to ensure the MSP implementation. The states are seeking working capital from the centre to compensate the farmers and the states also suggest that 50% of MSP loss should be borne by the government. States of course did come out with various suge other suggestions as as well but what we understand from the Niti Aayog officials is that they are not considering more crops under MSP as of now and there is going to be another meeting with the states on MSP in the next week so there are going to be more follow-up meetings until we do see a finalization on how this would be put across. Siraj Hussain is senior visiting fellow at iCryer and a former agri Seki as well. Mr. Hussain, hi thank you so much for joining us. Uh, the initial statements from this meeting are out. What is your sense? I mean, we understand that the major agenda of the conversation clearly has turned out to be about the funding of MSP, the budgeting of it, etc. What is your first thought on that? My impression is that uh, one of the very important points which would have been discussed in this meeting is how to honor the commitment given by the finance minister in the budget speech that the MSPs for Kharif crops would be fixed at 50% profit over E2 plus FL. I think I am very clear that uh, he has not talked about C2 and we should not debate that. Even uh, showing 50% profit, profit over E2 plus FL is going to be very difficult and I think that is what they would have discussed today, how to ensure First of all, how to announce whether it is feasible to announce an MSP that high? You know, Mr. Hussain, a, a couple of more statements that I do understand that the states did tell Niti Aayog. One was that the MSP formula needs to be worked out in such a way that the state's finances are not hurt. And there also was a suggestion that the procurement should not or rather should be capped at 50% by centre. So clearly there are more moving pieces here than and it, it, it does seem that we are slightly further away from uh, a proper implementation of this. Implementation of MSP for all crops uh, across India, as I have said earlier, is uh, not possible. Uh, what is possible is uh, some other formula, some other methodology like direct income transfer or uh, a price deficiency payment, uh, which was tried in Madhya Pradesh and which, in our view, was not very successful. Hmm. So the government has been buying only wheat and paddy. Uh, on a large scale and sugar cane of course is bought by the sugar companies uh, sugar mills where msp or its equivalent frp is guaranteed and in some years cotton and pulses are also bought now assuring msp and procuring all the commodities whether by states or by center is neither feasible nor desirable nor possible hmm. so the states would be worried in my view because um, 
there were some reports which suggested that uh, if there are any losses in procurement, they would be shared 50-50 between center and the state. So the mm. states would be worried on that count. Mm. See, physical management of stocks is an extremely difficult business, and we have seen. I have, of course, observed it for many years. But even now we can see that million tons of pulses which were procured, some 1.6 million ton is still lying unsold. Mm. So it is not easy. Physical procurement is very difficult. Mm. So, so what, according to you, is the way moving forward here? Because we understand from Niti Aayog that they are going to look at the finer points and details of this. They will have internal meetings now next week. Yet again, another meeting will be called with states. Uh, what, what needs to be thrashed uh, as from where we understand where we stand right now? I think uh, before we come to procurement of pri or price deficiency payments, mm. even before that, the mm. government of India has to decide what will be the MSP. Because the CACP recommendation for Kharif crops uh, would be coming very soon. If it has not already been submitted to the government, maybe in another two or three weeks it would be before the Ministry of Agriculture. Mm. And after that, the cabinet, the cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs has to decide the MSP for Kharif crops. Now, if the uh, commitment made by the finance minister is going to be actually put to practice, then uh, there will be a lot of issues arising out of that. For example, the MSP of cotton alone hmm. will rise by about a thousand rupees. Hmm. So we have uh, we are you know writing a paper which should be out in another uh, ten days or so. Okay. Let us see. <laughs> All right, Mr. Hassan, we'll let you go at that. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, that really is the initial comment coming in from the former agri Saki as well, that it does look like a very tough task going forward from here. One, to give 50% higher than the cost of production. For many of these crops, if you look at crop per crop per crop, the prices are going to go up. And as, of course, the states also have mentioned today, it is about the funding. They do not want to hurt the state finances. And they do want the center to come in in some sense to ensure that there is enough funding. Uh, but 24 crops already are under MSP and uh, it, it does seem difficult, of course, but as uh, Mr. Hussain was pointing out, it as of now is about honoring what has been decided in the budget. So we'll, of course, have to keep an eye on to that one on how that unfolds. Sumit Bagaria, Associate Director at Choice Broking, now joins us to talk more about that and other commodities. Sumit, hi. What is your sense on the agriculture sector right now? Because, of course, uh, the said word in the budget did sound good and we have seen that impact. The sentiment has been on the positive side. But when it comes to implementation, it, all is not so well. Hi, good afternoon, Mancha. Uh, well, see, most of the uh, agri commodities... Uh, uh, are looking like that they can give some correction from higher levels. At present, it seems that uh, Chana is weak and from here on there is a possibility that we might see a fall in the uh, commodity. I think it's quoting at around 30 20 levels. Any pullback or any bounce back from present levels in Chana should be used as a selling opportunity. And on downside, there is a possibility that we might see levels of around 3600 or 3500 levels in the next couple of weeks. Hmm. Uh, would you also say the same about the other commodities? Because we have seen some pressure come in for the edible oil sector today. Um, even the spices have been under pressure. So would you say that the initial euphoria really seems to be, you know, waning off right now? There is a possibility, yes. Uh, I think uh, soya bean, soya oil, uh, both are looking uh, uh, like there, is, there can be some correction from present levels. Especially if we talk of soya bean, it has resistance at around 3850 levels. So till that time, these levels are not taken away. There is a possibility that we might see some correction in the commodity in which we can see a fall of around 150 to 200 points from present levels. So I mean, it's currently quoting at around 3790, 3800 levels. I think from here on, there is a possibility that we might see a fall of fall till 3650 or even 3600 levels. So it's better to avoid long positions till the time resistance levels are not taken away. Once the resistance is taken away convincingly, then we will see a, a decent upside rally. But till that time, resistance is not taken away. It's better to be on sell side. On higher side, 3850 is resistance. Till that time, 3850 is not taken away. One should be on sell side. All right, Sumit, thank you so much for giving us those agri-calls there. Of course, Sumit.